We begin, though, with some food for thought. Are your trips to the grocery store giving your wallet a workout these days? Well, a new report finds it's only going to get more expensive. Canada's annual food price report estimates a typical family's bill will increase, there you see it, $966 next year. And in 12 years of tracking prices, that's the biggest jump that's ever been projected. Mary-Claude Bebo is the Minister of Agriculture. She's in Ottawa. Uh, Minister, very good to have you on the program. And I want to start uh, with the, the cost of food. Uh, Canada's food price report came out today. I'm sure you know about it. Highest increase since this report started being produced 12 years ago. What is your government prepared to do to address the high cost of food uh, that is incoming for 2022? Well, first, it is important to uh, remind everyone that inflation is is something that is happening uh, all across the world uh, following, you know, COVID and and the increased uh, cost of many inputs. So, what can we do? Well, we are working with the industry, trying to smooth the uh, the food supply chain as much as uh, as much as possible so trying to make the environment for our producers and and food uh producer uh more you know as uh good for for them to do business of course and then we are providing income support or financial support in different ways uh to canadians so obviously the canada child benefit is a good example to support families investing in daycare will be extremely helpful mm -hmm. once again for families but we have other measures for seniors and low-income uh workers um and uh, so these are the things we can do you know working on the food supply chain um to to improve the environment of doing business as much as, as a government can do mm -hmm. and providing uh, support to Canadians. Because you know, the, the increase in cost of food, of course, is, as you rightly note, part of the larger inflationary pressures being felt right across the economy. Um, and, uh, and ultimately, it means that the things people buy are costing more and are going up at a, at a rate higher than most people's salaries are going up. I, is the government recognizing that? And are there additional measures that you foresee, not just in the food space, but broadly across government to help support people or try to get those prices to a more manageable state? Yes, I mean, uh, the inflation, it, it's obvious we can see it uh, and uh, we acknowledge it. So this is why the way we can work on it is to try to provide a better business environment uh, you know where we can intervene and uh, increase uh, support for Canadians so through seniors uh, support through family support uh, so these are the ways that we can make life more affordable so the, the Canada the the child care uh, support will make a huge difference in the life of families investment in, uh, in housing is a is a very important uh, component of our support to, to Canadian families. You're talking uh, to us in this conversation about supply lines and about the impact of the pandemic on, on inflation. Um, I just bring you on that topic to look at what the Auditor General uh, talked about today. And, and she said the, the government has not developed a national emergency preparedness and response plan that considers a crisis affecting the entire food system and Canada's food security. Now, Two years ago, perhaps Canadians would not have fathomed a situation where the food supply itself would be in danger. But of course, then we went through a scenario where people freaked out over toilet paper when it was not really running out, but we created a situation under which it was. If there was a serious situation that had a major impact on Canada's food supply, is your office prepared to do the work that the Auditor General cites as necessary to ensure that Canada's food supply is secure? Uh, yes, I mean, we uh, we have received the, the recommendation of the auditor and we will be looking at it very carefully. And uh, we already we were already uh, involved in improving, you know, our mechanisms. But I would say that in the beginning of the COVID crisis, we were very worried uh, around the, the supply chain and the closure of the borders. But we rapidly saw that uh, our food supply chain was quite resilient and that we were able to keep the borders open uh, and and have you know the the, uh, the food supply uh, flowing in a very reasonable manner and then it, i would say that it was the uh, the, the challenge became uh, around labor more mm -hmm. but uh, absolutely we can always do better 
but we are starting from, a, I think, from a good point with our food supply chain. Yeah, because some of the moves that the government made um, when we were going through those early stages were very much reactionary. And it, it suggested, whether it was on food supply or in other areas, that perhaps uh, Canada was not as prepared as we all could have been um, for a, a major impact to supply lines and on the food system itself, that there wasn't a plan that envisioned something like this happened. There was a response when it did happen. Well, I think we did respond quite well because our food supply chain uh, was strong and resilient and uh, nobody, you know, uh, and it, it continued to work, mm -hmm. but better is always possible. Of course, we will learn from that and make it even stronger and more resilient. Can I talk to you about uh, PEI potatoes, the premier of that province down to meet with you and uh, a number of others uh, just yesterday. Um, the 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 hang up here on this potato wart virus is that Canada has taken a voluntary step to block exports into the United States so that the United States does not block imports, uh, something that would be a, a process is much harder to undo. Here's the question for you. Should PEI farmers expect this to be the case for weeks or months? What kind of timeline are we looking at? Extremely hard to tell. I mean, we are working uh, around the clock with the United States on both fronts, I would say on the scientific fronts, providing the evidence that they are asking for uh, with our scientific, uh, scientific um, scientists mm -hmm. at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, and also working uh, with uh, our trade commissioners, with our ambassadors, obviously Minister Ng, the Minister of International Trade is involved. So we are really trying to provide all the reassurance to the Americans that our fresh potatoes uh, can be exported. Uh, and I want to, you know, uh, reiterate the fact that they are absolutely safe for human consumption. It's absolutely Absolutely no issue around health. The issue is around the soil uh, contamination. So we agree that we have to be careful with seed potatoes, but fresh potatoes uh, after being washed and, you know, very clean, I can definitely travel out of the island. Mm -hmm. But uh, the United States are asking for further reassurance uh, since we have found uh, a few more cases, two more cases uh, of potato worth in uh the island. Like, is it really clear what the United States, what the threshold is for them to say, we're good with this resuming? Um, I mean, it's, it's a matter of um, tolerance to risk. So it uh, it, it's very difficult to have a very clear level. Mm -hmm. uh, they are asking us for the full results of the CFI investigation following these two new detections. Uh, they are asking us for additional measures uh, to make sure that the, there's the, no risk of transmission uh, through the soil. And uh, they are also revisiting their own pest risk uh, assessment. And uh, actually, my deputy minister uh, was in Washington, is in Washington, and having discussions because we believe they are going beyond science. It's based on science, absolutely. Uh, but uh, it's, as I said earlier, it's a matter of tolerance to risk. Yeah. And we feel they are going a bit, a bit too, too far. Just in, a, in the few seconds we have left, you, you note that this is right now about seed and fresh potatoes. It's not about processed potatoes. So there is a real prospect that potatoes and PEI are going to be thrown out or are going to have to be uh, thrown in, in the garbage, essentially, because of the piles that are growing now. Is there capacity elsewhere in Canada that could process those potatoes so they can be exported or used uh, in, in the U.S. market or beyond? Well, we have put in place a working group, uh, including the other representatives throughout the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to be creative and look at all the options that we can put in place uh, with the collaboration of the industry across Canada. And on another front, uh, I'm looking uh, forward to work uh, with uh, Minister Thompson, my counterpart in PEI, to quickly uh, put in place some uh, support to to uh, to farmers as well in the meantime. I'm talking about financial support. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yes, I mean, this is what we are looking for, financial support, but also, you know, whatever we can do, uh, looking, you know, forward to see the, the discussions of this working group. I think we can be creative and uh, see how potatoes can be used in different forms across the country. Minister Bebo, thank you very much for your time. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.